comes. This gospel today is speaking of the need for us to allow God himself to make us ready, to make us ready for his coming. And I don't know about you, I hope and pray, I long for that day, I anticipate that day when he comes, when he comes to meet us, when he comes to meet me. So I'm just going to go through first this little piece of scripture about wisdom. We hear about wisdom in this first reading. It says, whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed. Whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care. So these are really, these are good words for you and for me to pay attention to, to be able to get up and early in the morning and wait upon the Lord, to finish off our day at the end of the day, keeping vigil, spending time with the Lord. These five wise virgins were good examples of this. They had this foreknowledge to be able to do what they needed to do to be ready. They had the oil in their lamps, ready to go, and they were able to greet the bridegroom when he came. They prepared well. So this is an example for each one of us, these wise virgins. When we wake up early each day, are we waiting upon the Lord? Are we spending a moment reading the scriptures or saying a prayer? When we go to bed at the end of the day, are we looking back at our day? Are we entrusting our sleep to the Lord? Are we giving thanks for the things that he blessed us with throughout the day. See, this prayer life, this prayer that you and I have been encouraged to embrace as Christians, especially Catholic Christians, is so important. It's such an essential part of our relationship with Jesus, our relationship with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And if we pray, if we allow ourselves to enter into this relationship with the Lord, we ought to be like the psalmist in Psalm 63. I'm going to read a different version of this psalm, a psalm that comes from, a version that comes from the liturgy of the hours. It's a different translation, but I believe it comes across much more powerfully than the one we heard sung today. O oh God, you are my God, for you I long. For you, my soul is thirsty. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. These are powerful words. Longing for God. Thirsting for God. Like a dry, weary land without water. Have you ever seen a dry, weary land before? Have you ever been in a place that was having a serious drought where the ground is cracked open and it's just completely desolate and barren because it hasn't rained for 90 days or 120 days. But also, if you see in some of these places, as soon as they get a lot of rain, right away, the life comes up, the grass starts to grow, the flowers begin to be produced, everything comes to life very quickly once the water returns. So this longing for the Lord, this thirsting for the Lord is at the heart of our prayer life and why we pray and why we spend time with God each day in prayer. So I just want to share with you one paragraph from this section in the Catechism on Christian prayer. Part four of the Catechism is on prayer in the Christian life. And in paragraph number 2560, we hear the following that fits in very well with this psalm and with these scriptures today. It says, The wonder of prayer is revealed beside the well where we come seeking water. There, Christ comes to meet every human being. It is He who first seeks us and asks us for a drink. Jesus thirsts. He's asking, his asking arises from the depths of God's desire for us. Whether we realize it or not, prayer is the encounter 
of God's thirst with ours. God thirsts that we may thirst for him. Isn't that powerful? God desires intimacy with you and me. God thirsts for an encounter with you and me in prayer. God thirsts for your heart, for your soul, for your body, and for your mind to be in this intimate relationship with him. He desires it. And that's what then leads you and me to thirst for him in return. So this is from that gospel passage of the woman at the well. Who asks for the drink first? Jesus, not the woman. Jesus says to the woman, give me something to drink. And she says, well, I sh you shouldn't be asking me for something to drink. I should be asking you for something to drink. And it gets turned all around. It says in the next paragraph, 2561, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Paradoxically, our prayer of petition is a response to the plea of the living God. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Prayer is the response of faith to the free promise of salvation and also a response of love to the thirst of the only Son of God. This is so true. How often do you and I go to things other than God, people, circumstances, situations, trying to fill up our wells with anything other than God? How often do we allow busyness of life, distractions, phones, television, news, busyness to become our fountain instead of taking time as we began this homily with early in the morning, spending time with the true source, God. How often do we end up at the end of the day so tired that when we normally have some prayers that we would like to do, we just say, well, I'm just too tired. I'm going to go to bed and don't pray. Jesus is inviting us today, brothers and sisters, to fight for that time with him, that intimacy with him, that union and communion with him, because it's only in this intimacy with him that we're going to recognize him like the wise virgins when he comes, whenever that hour is. We don't know the day or the hour. Could be today. Could be right now during this homily. We don't know. But we want to be ready. I want to be ready. I hope you want to be ready. So then we continue on the next page in the Catechism, and I'll finish with these last two paragraphs, 2566 and 2567. It says, Man is in search of God. In the act of creation, God calls every being from nothingness into existence. Crowned with glory and honor, man is after the angels capable of acknowledging how majestic is the name of the Lord in all the earth. Even after losing through his sin, his likeness to God, man remains an image of his creator and retains the desire for the one who calls him into existence. All religions bear witness to men's essential search for God. This thirst for God, this hunger for God, this desire for intimacy with God is built into the soul, the heart, the mind of every human being from the moment of conception until death. And that's why people are always searching, always longing for, always seeking an encounter with God, and they'll find it in what other way they can if it's not from God. We're built for that. We're created for that. Every single human person in the entire world is created for intimacy with God, a relationship with God, union and communion with God. So the next paragraph, 2567, says, God calls man first. God initiates this relationship. God begins this relationship. 
It continues, man may forget his creator or hide far from his side, from his face. He may run after idols or accuse the deity of having abandoned him. Yet the living and true God tirelessly calls each person to that mysterious encounter known as prayer. In prayer, the faithful God's initiative of love always comes first. Our own first step is always a response. As God gradually reveals himself and reveals man to himself, prayer appears as a reciprocal call a covenant drama. Through words and actions, this drama engages the heart. It unfolds throughout the whole history of salvation. Whoa, those are powerful words. I encourage you, if you have time, to go back and reflect upon these few paragraphs of the Catechism in your own prayer time. The Lord is inviting you today to respond to this invitation, and that's why you're here. He's going to present himself in a few moments in a very real, tangible way, body and blood on the altar. He's going to give himself to you and to me because he thirsts for your soul and he thirsts for my soul. And when we come forward to receive him, it's our thirst for him that's going to satisfy us. So when you come forward today, don't just come forward as you normally, ordinarily do. Come forward with this new awareness of who it is we're about to encounter and who it is that wants to satisfy this deep hunger, this deep thirst that is in each and every one of us and allow him to fill you, to fill your cisterns, to fill your wells with his presence, with his love, with his mercy, with his sanctifying grace, with his joy, with his peace, and with every other good thing he wants to give you today. And leave here different, brothers and sisters, than you arrived, like the woman at the well who went back to the village and told every single Samaritan in that village who she encountered. And guess what happened? The entire village came back because of her account, her testimony, because of her witness, because she was changed by God himself in that moment of encountering him at the well. Let, you, let, you, let your lives be changed today. Allow yourselves today to have a life-changing encounter with Jesus in the Eucharist. And each and every time you approach the altar, pray for the same grace. Lord, I want a life-changing encounter with you today. I want to grow more in your likeness each and every day until the day I meet you face to face and I'm ready, like the wise virgins, to enter into the fullness of your glory because I know you and you know me. And this will be an easy transition at that moment if we allow ourselves to be ready, to be prepared. So I'm going to ask you the same question again that I asked at the beginning of the homily. Are you ready? Hopefully the answer is yes, I'm more ready than I was at the beginning of this homily, but I'm still not yet quite fully ready, Father. Let's be ready when he comes, and let's be ready to enter in to the joy and the fullness of his presence in heaven. So let's pray for that grace right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you for the gift of the word, the gift of this word today especially we ask that you help us to respond to your thirst for us by thirsting for you by coming forward today with this hunger and thirst to receive the fullness of your presence the fullness of your grace the fullness of your blessing help us to grow today in a deeper intimacy with you and help us to continue to desire this each and every day of our lives until we meet you face to face and you say the words to each one of us, well done, good and faithful servant. You have run the race to the finish. Welcome home. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.